It's my huge pleasure to now hand over to our first keynote speaker, Te Kahu Rolleston. Te kāna me tuku tēnei te mihi ki a tātou kua hui hui mai nei raru i te maru o tēnei kaupapa, ki a koutou ngā kai whakarite nā koutou tēnei kua hei whakatūwhera ki a pai tamā te kuhunga i tēnei ata, no reira, nei rā au, nei rā tauranga moana, nei rā kōku iwi mihi kaotu ana ki a tātou kua hui hui mai nei. Tchur! <laughs> Start like this. Ehi katsu, wake ki runga rā, fi tiki tāu wā haitam. Uwe a ki te uru, kume a ki te tonga, hiki nuku, hiki rangi, ia rara. Kangarue, i kangarue, tō i a ki te haumaranga i kia whakarongo taku kiri ki te ki, kini a te rehutai. O ngā ngaru whati whati e haruru mai nei, wi, 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 wa, 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 ha, ha. Hora hia o mata kia mere mere tu, wa hia hi hai taki te ara kia tangaro. He atu a hao i te tini ki te pō e koko i a e a rai. I'm a poet and I like to write poetry and perform poems, but that's not a poem that I write. That's a poem that it said the patu paerehe, or the fairy people of my home wrote. They wrote it at a time before humans arrived here in Aotearoa, before our waka carried us here from Hawaii. And at that time, there were three mountains that lived close to where I'm from, Tauranga Mōna. There was a mountain without a name who was a slave who had no rank. There was a great chiefly mountain named Ōtāne Wainuku. And there was a princess mountain named Pūwhenua. The, the mountain without any rank loved this princess mountain so much, but because he wasn't really that flash, he didn't really feel it. <laughs> she wasn't really digging it. And so, so this mountain without a name became so whakamā, or embarrassed within himself, he became shy, he became depressed, and he called out to the beings of the night, the same ones who wrote that incantation that I just used, that are called the Patupare here where we're from. And these beings of the night, if you're to compare them to things we like to see today, well, we see today, me as a person who's been through some pretty shocking relationships in my life, I'm able to, I'm able to understand that, that that feeling of whakama from a relationship, or that feeling of pain from a relationship, could drive you to do crazy things or irrational things, eh? And so... This mountain called out to these patu here, and I like to liken them to things like alcohol or drugs or things we call out to in the nighttime and things that grab us and pull us into the darkness in a modern day world. And so these patu here were dragging him towards the ocean because all he wanted to do was drown beneath the tides of Tangaroa. They dragged him and they carved out all of the waterways of Tauranga Moana. The waterways that um, followed where this mountain was dragged are called Waimapu, the tears that rain from the eyes, Waimapu. And they filled, the river, uh, they filled the rivers as the mountain was being towed. Just before the mountain reached the ocean of Tangaro, Tamanui Te Rā, the sun god, rose. Tamanui Te Rā is of the day, he is of the light. So of course he was able to disperse these patupaere here of the night. And so they, they dispersed back to Hotere, but before they returned, they said to this mountain that had no name, Your name shall be Mowal, he who was captured by the light of the day. Mowal. And that's how we named our mountain in Tauranga Moana today. And I like to tell that story not only because of the issues that we have of depression or of mental health that are going on in Aotearoa and especially within our rangatahi Māori, but I like to tell it because as well as that, it's a story that goes from a mountain that was a slave to nothing to a great mountain that people come from all around the world to visit all the time, a mountain that became a chief from nothing. It's not just the story of depression, it's a beautiful story and... I always like to start with something that I didn't create myself, just to pay homage to those who went before me. No reira, nei rau tukua tu te mihi ki a koutou katoa, nei rau hoki au e mihi atu ki taku maunga a rākou mau au te rā e tūwake rā te maunga nā nā tamanui te rā e ho. Alright, let's do some poems, eh? A little bit about me. I'm lucky enough to be born and raised on a place called Matakana Island. If you don't know where that is, it's the centre of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right next to the um, it sits right next to that mountain I just spoke of called Mowal, just across the harbour from it. So of course I have a real close connection with that mountain, and I talk about it every single place that I go. It's just what I do. Um, we're going to start with a poem that I wrote. It's called From Patu to Pen. 
Um, those of you who don't know, I was once the um, New Zealand Spoken Word Poetry Champion. I was lucky enough to go to the World Pacific Festival, entered in the World Pacific Slam. I won the slam over there. And then I've been lucky enough that my mahi is to travel around um, engaging people or informing people what I like or how I see the world through my poetry. So, yeah. This piece is called From Potu to Pen, and it explains my understanding on the changes that have gone on from Aotearoa uh, pre pre-engagement or the time when we met with the settlers until now. Need I talk? I pick up my pen in the blind attempt of trying to write one of these rhyming remedies like my ancestors were. Forced to pick up a weapon and go to war to smite their enemy back then. It was about who's weapon and war's swifter these days. It's about who has the language ability to bullet points and talk swifter. We've come from our own economic system of take, utu and air to living with loans on our homes and no ways to clear this debt up. We've come from ngakite wānanga o tāne to an education from a wānanga only being acknowledged as qualifications from university, from separate iwi with our own cultures to ngai Māori, slowly but surely forced to merge, losing our unique diversity. We've come from a time where Papa Tuwa Nuku was cherished, to now, when Papa and our surrounding environment is blatantly neglected. We threw the reina in the arena of Tangaroa and watched as he was poisonously infected, because we drew holes deep into our mother. We chopped down our brother's forest and still, we have the nerve to wonder why Rua Umoko was under this earth quaking on us. We were once of this land. Physical and spiritual natives, now we are just on this land. All day hooked on Facebook and YouTube consumed digital natives. Must I remind you that mine is the first generation to be plagued with technologies of this sort. We bit the bad fruits of blackberries, bushes and apples products while being ripped off. We chose the bad things that sucked onto us and they put it into intel and now they'll get cross. We came from tikanga and koa to etiquette and morality from fishing trips to fishing chips and bakeries. <laughs> came from living as a collective in pa to urbanised individualistic society from having rangatira tanga to having to constantly remind this government of te tiriti or waitangi and on that, this world of pen and paper witchcraft and trickery is heavy to toll. Sign this, read that, learn this, write that, forget what you know, because if it's not in writing, then it's senseless you trying to claim fact. Like how Captain Cook recorded in his book that he discovered New Zealand way back, but anyone who knows the real history of Aotearoa knows based on the name that only someone from the generation of Kupe can claim that. But what's a culture of oral traditions to a culture that refuses to listen to people who have eyes but can't use them to see past what's written, a nation that lacks vision? Generations that have been educated to lack wisdom, read this, learn that, forget what you know, keep your opinions to a minimum because people don't want to know. Go to class, make sure you pass, believe there's truth in what you're told, I mean. We've come from having mana to chasing a rip and a swag from haka, to spitting raps from being warriors, to getting patched in gangs and becoming soldiers. I'm not saying that positive development and progression hasn't occurred within New Zealand. I'm simply posing the question, in accordance with whose cultural values and ethnocentric perspective, because it sure was announced. I know that because most of the time when I speak, I can't even get a tihai Māori order in support of that. People are too busy trying to go live on Insta, Facebook, or Snapchat. Can I get an app? <laughs> get yeah. uh, one of the other things I really like to do is I like to um, share, share, share my culture or a cultural perspective with people. So I'm sure we all have heard about Matariki. And I'm lucky enough to have um, travel, spent a lot of time travelling around Aotearoa and I've been able to hear lots of stories about Matariki that different people have. And lots of people argue with each other like, no, nah, yeah, my story about Matariki is the right one. And then I'll follow, no, nah, my one's the right one. No, nah, your one's wrong, my one's right. And so I like to listen to all the stories and I take the part of the story that captures me the most and I brought it together to create a narrative that most people can um, agree with. And so this is my understanding of Matariki based on um, my my luck, I guess, of being able to meet all these different people who know about Matariki from their own perspectives. Matariki. 
the eyes of a god, Mata Ariki. Out of rage about his parents' separation, the god of wind himself, Tafri, Matea, took out his own eyes and threw them through the clouds into the night forever to shimmer and shine in the realm of his father, Ranginui, god of the skies. We could learn from Matariki. In a modern day context from this, there are so many concepts we could learn. For instance, the separation of a mother and a father will always be a harsh and sharp turn for a waka being sailed along this journey of life by a child to verse. So we must ensure that we tend to their hurt before they are given the opportunity to hurt themselves first because eventually they do. Matariki, a time to reminisce on those that have been lost to the goddess of death who was once our symbol of life, ironic all and all, hine ahuone, now and forevermore to be remembered as the goddess that crushed Maui hine nui te po. You see, Matariki are the stars that rise on the tail of the Milky Way streaming where I'm from. That means it's time for the muscles to be milky and the kinder to be creamy so the barbecue's blazing and the pots are steaming the perfect time together for Fano hui and meeting. You see, Shakespeare said a rose by any other name smells just as sweet. But Matariki, seen through the eyes of any other people, is just as much of a magnificent sight for one's eyes to see. Whether called Pleiades, whether called the Sailing Sisters or Makahiki, whether called Puanga, whether called Subaru or Matariki, regardless, it can't be coincidental that so many cultures around the world gather to observe these stars as they burn bright. Keep that in mind. When I tell you the Japanese call this constellation Subaru, which translates to unite and matariki, is the exact reason we gather beneath these stars of the night to unite beneath matariki. Chair. I can see my time's ticking along, so I won't be too much longer. <coughs> this next piece. This next piece, um, we're getting quite close to November, and I know a lot of us celebrate Guy Fawkes, eh? fireworks and all of that. Um, when I was younger, I used to ask my mum if I could get some Guy Fawkes or some fireworks, and she'll give me this big, huge lecture about what happened on that exact date in Parihaka, in Taranaki, in Aotearoa, and gave me this whole big speech about how dare you want to blow something up on a day that stands for peace and our people, and so I was like, oh. And for my whole life, that's what I thought about when I fought a guy fox. And now that I'm older, it was more like I was hurt when I was young gay. Like, yeah, my old lady doesn't want to give me guy fox. <laughs> but now when I'm older and I understand it, um, I'm real glad that my mum did things like that when I was growing up. Hey, she instilled in me that this is more important than blowing something up. Hey, this, this what our tūpuna did or what these people did is one of the greatest stands of peaceful resistance that ever occurred in the whole history of the whole world. And so why are we trying to blow stuff up on that day? And so, yeah, this is my understanding of Parihaka. I'll start by stating I'm not of Parihaka papa. Taranaki is not where my maunga stands. My maunga is mo oh, one from Tauranga Mōwana to be more specific to mo tere o matakana. I state that because I'm a firm believer in decolonized methodology, so I'd never try and speak for them. I only speak on how I've personally learned from their examples and philosophies, the people of Parihaka. The protectors of peace, the independence defenders, the ones who were able to do it without using weapons, their form of passive, aggressive, active resistance and protest shall eternally be remembered, especially Considering the sort of law changes being made these days which are impeding on protesters. We must acknowledge the visionaries with sight. Te fiti the shine. Tohu the sign ngā rangatira toko rua. Tohu kākahi roa ko te fiti o rongo mai. You see te fiti sent men to plough. Dig the lands up and mess with the land surveyors with no intention or mention of violence and aggression. Not even as the people of Parihaka that were ploughing the lands up as a means of peaceful protest were being arrested. Yet still, on November 5th, 1881, the invasion begun. As the invading squad invaded, waving guns a stand was taken. Those soldiers were fired upon with shots of smiles and bombed with grenades of gracious love. They were welcomed 
and embraced with hugs. For these soldiers invading the space, to invade there wasn't space enough, so the people of Parihaka fell their own walls and made enough. How could you, as a soldier, rolling on a people offering all they have and still confiscate their stuff, rape and touch the woman, pillage the village and chop all the crops in the estate to dust? It took a matter of months, but it was done. You see, Te Fiti, Tohu, and their men were imprisoned, but still they preached, still they practiced non-violent resistance. And in 1883, some were allowed back. Proof the plan of a peaceful people of Parihaka had not failed. But by 1886, for simply holding a meeting, again Te Fiti was jailed, but by 1888, all who survived the turbulence of the times were allowed to return, which means, in the end, peace won over war. In the end, peace wins over all with examples like Parihaka. Why is it that we still haven't learnt and we just keep going to war? Kia ora. All right, last one, last one. Be a light one, be a light one. Sorry, sorry, I made you all serious. Eh? My bad, my bad. <laughs> Anyone got any questions before I wrap us up? Good, I like the no questions, it's better. I see the sponsors on here. One of the other things I used to do, or I'm, I, I don't know if I'm lucky enough, one of the other skills I have, I guess, is I like to make stuff up on the, on, off the cuff. And then I've seen a bunch of sponsors on this thing, so I guess we'll do a, make something up about the sponsors. Is that it? Are we into that? Yeah, yeah. Ah, have you got the thing when you can put them up there? Oh, yeah. Do a little ass on here, I can't. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right. See, see. From us right here, we want to send a mihi for the contributions given to us by Catalyst and by Water Solutions. That's how it is and we're never gonna stop. We open the library initiative like Equinox. Bad with the flows and we're never gonna let go. The next mihi, it goes out to Ebsco. Bad with the flows and without failure. Got a mihi out to line Aust Australia. I don't know how to say it, but I'ma carry on doing it. Carry on with the words, yep, I'll be moving it. PTFS. That's in Europe, is it? Tēnā <laughs> and we carry on moving with it. Plus, I got the words that I'm dropping like prophecies. The next mihi out to FE Technologies. Plus, we gotta do it rapid on until the end. Another mihi to internet NZ. Bad with the words, always trust, no disrespect. The next mihi goes to Library o Tech. I said it kind of wrong and I might have started, but still mihi out to use the cousins. <laughs> but bad with the words and I ain't trying to be trying, G. Plus, I got the mad words mihi to the... Library. Is that library? I can't really see it. I can, I can't, but still a mihi to the library bar. Plus we carry on with the flows in the mean flow. Last mihi out goes to Flamingo. Ten out of